Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another Roll20 video. This time I'm going to talk about a new script that I've been working on that lets you define groups of tokens that you want to use as encounters in your game and at playtime easily move them forward from the GM layer to the token layer for your players to encounter. It's probably best to start out with a demonstration, so let's jump into our game. You might recognize this map from the D&D Essentials Kit. This is the Dwarven Expedition map and I've been setting up this adventure to play with my group. As part of the adventure, the players arrive at the expedition, deal with the ruins, and then as they're departing, they are ambushed by a group of orcs. So because my players will be using this map before the orcs arrive, I can't leave the orcs' tokens on the token layer. If I leave them on the GM layer, I need to switch layers, highlight them, avoid highlighting things like room number tokens, etc., and then move the to them back to the token layer. Alternatively, I could move them into the canyon walls, which the players probably won't be able to see, uh, which works fine, but then I have to move them back to their appropriate positions when they show up. Encounter Helper is my solution to this. With this API script, I can create a group of the six orcs and give it a name. Then, when the time comes, I can use that name and a command in the, in the Roll20 chat to bring all the tokens to the token layer in one shot. Let's take a look at how that works. Encounter Helper has a single command, uh, exclamation point EH. This command has a few subcommands, but the one we're interested in right now is list. So I enter EH list in the chat box. Encounter Helper will whisper a list of the encounters defined for this map to me. Uh, I can see the encounter names. In this case, we have one encounter called when orcs arrive and we have four buttons associated with the encounter. The first button, S, will show the encounter, and this will move all the tokens associated with the encounter to the token layer. The second button, H, for hide, will similarly move all the tokens to the GM layer, hiding them from the player's view. The third button, D, is for details or display, and it will output a summary of the encounter, including each token, the hit points the token has left, uh, and their armor class. I use bar 3 for hit points, but the bar used is configurable in the script, so I know the default for roll 20 I think is, to is bar 1, so you can change that in the script itself. And finally, the X button, which will remove the encounter from the encounter list. This won't have any impact on the tokens, it just causes the encounter helper to forget that the tokens were part of a given encounter. So how does this work? First, there are a couple of requirements. Encounters are tracked per page, so you will only see encounters defined for the Dwarven Excavation while the player ribbon is on the Dwarven Excavation map. And that's something to keep in mind. There's a limitation in Roll20 that uh, the API cannot tell where the DM is viewing. So everything is based on the player ribbon. Uh, you can only interact with encounters on the map that the player ribbon is currently attached to. Um, on any page where encounters are going to be used, you need to create a token and give it a special name. That name will be encounter token, a space, a dash, and another space, followed by the name of the page. This is case sensitive, though if you try to use the encounter helper commands without having the correctly named token on the page, the script will tell you that you need to create one and it'll give you the name that you need to use. So I have my token here. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how big it is or what layer it's on. It just has to exist with the correct name. My players will never see this token, so I've got it on the GM layer. Uh, behind the scenes, what we're actually doing is the encounter helper is saving details of the encounters we define in the GM notes section of this token. I wouldn't suggest editing this manually, though. The Roll20 editor tends to do really weird things with the text you put into... Uh, notes and GM notes, um, and it would probably interfere with the functioning of Encounter Helper. You also wouldn't want to go look up all those token IDs by, by hand anyway. So that begs the question, how do we create an encounter? So over on this section of the map, I've got a few ghouls set up. I have a couple of them out in front hiding in the ruins as ambushers, and a large group that the players can spot when they enter the area and we'll set up two encounters for this. We do that by simply highlighting the tokens we want to be part of an encounter and entering the command 
eh create followed by the name of the encounter. In this case, we'll call these guys Ghoul Gang. We can see that the script lets us know that it created the encounter, which consists of five tokens. We can bring our list back up and see that we now have two encounters, Ghoul Gang and When Orcs Arrive. We can move the ghouls to the GM layer by clicking on the hide button, or we can bring them back so we can reposition them as we want on the um, map for the perfect start to the combat. We still have two ghouls left over, so let's highlight those and create another encounter. We'll type in eh create ghoul ambushers. Again, the script lets us know it created the encounter, this time with two tokens. If we bring up our list again, we can hide these guys separately from the main group of ghouls, so we can spring them on the party from behind once they are engaged with the main force. We can even leave the main force of ghouls on the token layer. The whole point is for the players to spot them and attack the ambushers so the ambushers can move in. Finally, after the players have dealt with both groups of ghouls, we can hide them all to declutter the virtual tabletop. One potentially helpful trick is that if we put all of our ghouls into a single encounter group, uh, even if they're part of other encounters, uh, we can treat them as a single unit. Let's bring them all back to the token layer. I hate switching layers because I never remember to switch back, so I'd rather move the tokens around uh, and highlight all the ghouls. We'll create a new encounter, this time called All the Ghouls. We'll see that the encounter was created, this time with seven tokens. Let's pop up our list again, and now we have four encounters in this area. We can show or hide the ghouls as a group of seven, as a group of two, and a group of five, uh, any combination we like. The other place I think this script is useful is for random encounter maps. For example, if you have a generic on-the-road map, uh, I can set up all the encounters on the map, and when I move my players to that map, I can just pop up the encounters um, that the players are facing at the time. Let me switch over to another map to show you what I mean. Here's a roadside encounter map I found on Reddit. I'll put a link in the description below. I created a few encounters on this map by searching for graphics inside the Roll20 graphics tab, and I dragged them onto the map. I did this one encounter at a time, creating an encounter definition for each one, and then hiding it before moving on to the next encounter. So now when I'm running a random encounter, I can spring the goblin ambush, or I can hide the goblin ambush and put an overturned wagon in the road. And this encounter is actually in two parts. Uh, the wagon is bait, but the bandits lying in wait to ambush anyone that investigates. So when the party approaches and springs the trap, I just add the bandit encounter to the active list. Or maybe this random encounter is a dragon roaming across the countryside. Okay, that's not likely to be a random encounter, but hey, you can do it. Anyway, if you're interested in trying it out, I've left a link to in the description to the development gist on GitHub. Uh, this isn't on the Roll20 one-click installer yet, but any feedback, bug reports, or improvement suggestions are welcome. And thank you for watching.